Hi, my name is Krzysztof Piskorski and I'm the lead writer and co-designer of Lands of Evershade. Welcome to our second development video. Uh, and today I'm joined by the other half of the design team, Ernest Kiedrowicz. Hi. Who's also the lead developer of the game. And together we will walk you through a small bit of exploration gameplay. We will show you some basic components of the game. We will talk about models and other interesting parts of uh, lands of Evershade. And because we will be playing the game for just a couple of short turns, we have a new addition to the party. Apart from the paladin uh, character you've seen created during the first video, we also have... Yes, I, uh, today I will be playing with Bolgrim Hunter, a fierce ranger who is trying to find his place in the lands of Evershade. Uh, today we'll be playing with two characters, but uh, the final count of the game will be uh, up to five. Uh, yeah. characters and what's uh, I think also important for some of you uh, the game will be fully playable with only one character yes so it's very solo friendly for those of you who would like to explore Evershade alone and before we proceed any further a standard uh, word of warning everything you see today is a game on very early stage of development. Uh, the game is scheduled for the end of this year, which means at this moment many layouts are simply not there, many texts and illustrations are placeholders, and um, you will be able to see a more finished prototype sometime after the summer. Uh, that being said, we already want to show you the key concepts and core mechanics of the game to hear your uh, opinion about how the game shapes up to be and to hear if there's anything you would love to see in a game like that. So if there's anything that comes to your mind during this video, uh, leave us a message in the comments. The first component we'd like to show you today is the storybook. In the previous uh, video, you've seen player's handbook used to create your character, to immerse yourself in the lore and to advance. But every Land of Evershade adventure, and will, there will be many of those, uh, comes with its separate storybook. Now the storybook is a component similar to Exploration Journal from Tainted Grail or Logbook from ISS Vanguard. So if you played any of those games, you generally know what to expect. But there are two main differences. In Lands of Evershade, the storybooks contain more uh, mechanical elements, more gameplay of the game, and they also uh, contain more choices to cover for all possible types of characters that may play through the adventure. And uh, everything uh, that happens in the storybook, all the story beats, all the scenes, all the dialogue, uh, is connected and takes place on one of the secret sheets. The secret sheets are a second basic component of the game, and here we can see one of them inserted in a component known as the story tracker, is uh, this sheet here. So, Ernest, what are we looking at? Uh, in this case, we have a secret sheet named Journey to Whitewell. Uh, it shows uh, a path our party must uh, take to get to the city of Whitewell. Um, and uh, the whole sheet, in this case, is divided into spaces with different locations we can explore and find them, like, the, or have some adventures mm -hmm. there. Um, and. Uh, also, the sheet has its own rules. We want to show you the rules connected with the, to the secret sheet uh, for you to uh, don't have to look for them in the rulebook. Yes, and the rules can be very different, just like the sheets can be very different. Because uh, right now you're looking at uh, part of the overland travel, so something like a board with a map or connected location cards from the Tainted Grail Exploration Journal. But the possibilities do not end here. Yes, uh, the key feature of Secret Sheets is the word secret. Uh, with each sheet we want to surprise players and give them many various experiences, like the, in this case it's, it is a map, 
uh, in the next one it will be maybe a city plan or even a bottom of the barrel when you search for some items. Yeah, and uh, speaking of which, uh, we have uh, examples to show you. For example, this sheet here is a very early version of a sheet that shows the uh, city of Whitewell in a close-up. So, for example, while you're traveling uh, the overland map in an adventure, when you reach a certain point of the map, you can trigger a close-up of this specific point, a dungeon, a temple, a city, with another explorable map. Or you could trigger one of our many combat sheets. For example, here, uh, the um, grid uh, for um, playing a tactical encounter. But that's not everything. It's not only about the scale, it's also about uh, many cool smaller story bits and moments, like solving riddles. For example, while you're uh, traveling a dungeon on this side of the story tracker, you could trigger a riddle over here that you have to solve or some kind of a, a nice visual puzzle. And the fact that the sheets are not bound in the book is also very important because Yes, because uh, we know how important is your table space, yeah. so uh, we will make sure that at any moment there won't be more than two secret sheets at the same time on the table. Yes, and this opens up many possibilities for game designers. For example, this map can trigger multiple possible sheets here, so we don't have to worry what's on the other page uh, if it was a bound book. Now, uh, if we are talking about the sheets, and since they have spaces for models, as you can already see, it's probably a good model moment to talk about models as well. Yeah, exactly. In the game, we have two main group of models. The first one are the more general models. Uh, so these models shows you, for example, it's your party model, uh, quest models or danger models. They represent encounters you uh, meet on, during your journey. Mm -hmm. uh, or various locations related yes. to quests. Yeah. And the second uh, group of models will be more specific. Uh, it will show your character, the en enemies you face yes. or some surprises. And let's bring this sheet up again. Uh, so, uh, while general models are mostly used on those uh, large-scale overland exploration types of sheets, uh, you also have a specific model for your character and specific models for enemies to play tactical combat with. Uh, so while your party is here represented by this model, you could use your character models to play a uh, short dynamic combat over here. But yeah, but as you said, it's not always the case, yes? yes. Uh, as again, we want to surprise players, so sometimes you will use various models on various sheets. So uh, when your party will split mm -hmm. up, you will use your character models uh, to roam around the land. and. Um, again, in, on the combat sheet, you may use sometimes a quest model or the danger model to represent some surprises you can meet. Yes, for example, I don't know, if you're having a special type of combat where your party is climbing over the back of the mm -hmm. giant beast or something like that, you could potentially use a party model there. Okay, and uh, right now we do not have any examples of the um, character models with us. You've seen the renderings in the previous uh, video uh, and uh, that's because we won't be playing any combat today. Combat is another major topic uh, that we will touch in the next update but uh, having said that there will be many in cool individual moment, uh, models, many enemies connected in various ways to the Lands of Evershade lore, and many, many character models, so that you can pick a model that you think best represents your specific character. Right now, we are planning to have uh, two different character models for each of many playable races of the game, and they will be connected to general archetypes typical for this race. So, for example, if uh, you have a Bolgrim, uh, the 
body type A model will be a very outdoorsy type that could be a druid, a hunter, a possibly a barbarian, yeah? And uh, body type B would be your very heavily armored close combat type of uh, person. Before we begin the gameplay part of this uh, development video, uh, there's one last component we can talk about. It's the story tracker, the thing you see here. Uh, it has uh, slots for two sheets. Uh, you never need more than two at any given moment. And it has uh, the numbered and lettered slots for story marks. So while you go through the story and make choices, and again, Lands of Evershade is a very choice heavy game where everything you decide matters and has consequences consequences down the line, you will place marker here, markers here to represent uh, your uh, choices and they are checked by the storybook in many, many places. And just like everything in the game, the story tracker doesn't require a pen, you don't have to write down anything, it's easily savable with a small lid that keeps your cubes in place and uh, that's basically everything. Yes, uh, and the second function of the story tracker is the uh, time measurement. Oh, yeah. um, during uh, our adventures, uh, we'll have some time pressure, uh, and it could be different uh, depending on the sheet we are using. Yeah, so, so here we have five days, right? Mm -hmm. During our journey to Whitehall, the time token will show us uh, how much days have passed, mm -hmm. but during the combat it could be the rounds of combat, during the chase uh, it could be heartbeats. So it won't be one time token, we'll use a few uh, ones that matches this yeah, different Yeah, a few tokens to match different sheets and just like Ernest told you, it can be torches, it can be heartbeats, it can be days or months or weeks, again. All the basic systems of Lands of Evershade are designed to give the widest possible range of stories that we can tell and to represent all possible story bits that could appear in a cool RPG type adventure. And that's it, we are ready to go. I'll remove this sheet because we won't need it for now. Uh, we've already started the game and we will take you through several next turns of exploration to show you how the sheets interact with the storybook, to show you how the roles and basic action resolution works in the game, and to show you some choices that you will have while adventuring. So uh, we've already started this sheet, uh, and so Ernest, tell me where were we and what's happening right now? What's the story so far? With pleasure. So. Um, uh... We are during our quest uh, on the journey to Whitewell. We have some like main quest, but we will keep it secret to not spoil the mm -hmm, game. Mm -hmm. uh, we made some exploration, and these markers represent the places we have been uh, already. And now we are in the foothills camp. Uh, there we. Uh, uh, gained the knowledge about yeah. uh, bandit group that is represented with a danger, danger model. model and they are in the crossroads and uh, what else and I think it's more more uh, interesting uh, we have encountered a uh, strange white-haired man who is sitting near the camp yeah and we decided to go talk to him because a exactly. white-haired man maybe he has two swords to spare or something like that let's see so uh, from 165, which is the main story entry mm -hmm. for Foothills Camp, we went to 165. Uh, we went to approach the strange white-haired man, 168. And here we have our first story entry of today's video. Up close, it becomes evident why this man sits alone. He is one of the sun-bleached, those who have endured the light of the broken sun and survived, 
uh, although at the cost of most of their memories. He tells you he's the sole survivor of a doomed expedition of his noble house that went to the Fadelands to retrieve some brillium and fashion a family sword, like those of larger houses. Something went wrong uh, and Sunrise caught them far from Luada's protection. The man has been trying to get back home for many years, but all memories of it are gone. He only remembers he used to glimpse at the silhouette of Bear Peak from a large porch and the countless hours he spent fishing in the lake. And now we have choices. We have three choices uh, in this scene. We can uh, direct him towards his home, but it would require a G marked in the story tracker. We don't have it yet. We don't know where his home is. Uh, convince him to forget the past and take care of the present, which would basically convince him to abandon his search. It's resolved with a charisma role and we'll get into roles later or we could leave him for now. And I think this is the option we'll choose. Uh, we could try to search for his uh, lost home. Yeah, I don't want to convince him to lose hope mm -hmm. because we might have an idea where his home is. Yes. Uh, if we look at the map, we have Bear Peak in the center of the map. We know he was from a noble house, so they most likely had some kind of palace or a castle or something like that. It was a long time ago. So probably, taking all of this into consideration, uh, I think the ruined mansion could be our target. Yeah, a ruined mansion over here and it's even close to the lake, so it seems like I a good I think we can give guess. it a try. Yeah. And uh, since our only other option would be to go through the bandits, basically, <laughs> I we think don't want well, yeah, it we'll, for uh, now. yeah, we'll head on this small subquest and see if the ruined mansion is indeed the home of this lost person. So now uh, we have concluded uh, leave him for now. It returns us to the main uh, entry of uh, Foothills Camp, which allows us to leave. The exploration action is finished. The game asks us to perform a new action on sheet three. And sheet yes. three, like most of our sheets, has several simple actions. So right here we can... Uh, we on, in the, on the uh, sheet three, we have three actions available. Uh, we can explore um, the location we are in, but we just done it. Uh, we can rest. Uh, but we will, I think, uh, talk about it later. And we can travel. And that's the thing that is um, interesting us right now. Yes, so uh, uh, we'll resolve the travel action. But before that, uh, just a short note that actions on this map are quite simple. But again, actions are specific to the uh, secret sheet they are on. So if we would travel through a desert, the travel action could have worked differently. If we would be in a dangerous location, the exploration action could have worked differently and yes, there could be may differ. other actions as well. Yeah, There may be some new actions that fit the surroundings. Okay, uh, so but for now, uh, we'll travel. Yeah. The travel action tells us to move the party model to any connected space. So we'll move our party model to abandoned uh, township space. And then, if there is no marker in this space, uh, our day ends. We go to the log one to five. So on this sheet, every time you travel uh -huh. to a location that's not fully explored, you finish the day. Uh, I won't read the one to five in details because this end of the day uh, entry for this sheet uh, makes some story checks related to events that may happen while you spend your night uh, on this map. Uh, but one important thing that nearly every entry that finishes mm -hmm. your day does is it triggers the camp phase. And the, the camp phase is played using another secret sheet, the one we haven't shown you before. It's in a very early stage. So whenever you finish your day, you go to the camp, camp has slots for cards and uh, you can upgrade it with uh, new facilities and uh, with uh, uh, better uh, crafting stations, tents, things like that. Uh, you can use it to heal, to uh, gain some bonuses, for example, by using the shrine. Uh, so 
essentially it's another way to advance your character your party because apart from your individual character advancement you can upgrade your camp as well and it's also another uh, place for the stories of the game because very often uh, in a camp an npc may join you related to the current adventure or a companion of your character and you can have many cool interactions with them while in the camp phase. Yes, again, we want to surprise players, yeah. so even in the camp there can be surprises waiting for the players, so some uh, surprising uh, encounters, events, guests, uh, we want to uh, have a great var variety of uh, yeah, different events. Exactly. So, the camp phase goes through several small steps like uh, healing wounds, things like that. Uh, it finishes, then uh, the entry uh, asks us to move the enemy uh, on the predetermined patrol path and we're also incrementing the dial here. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's it, that's the uh, um, travel action completed. Yes. Now that the travel action is finished, we are in a new location and uh, we could travel again or we could explore. And on this sheet, exploration doesn't progress time. It's essentially free. So uh, I think uh, uh, even though we're heading towards the ruined mansion, it wouldn't hurt to explore around. Maybe we will find something interesting in the mm -hmm. abandoned township. Yes? yes? Exploration. Uh, okay. Uh, no, no, go for we'll it. resolve the exploration action. Go to the entry listed in your space, uh, 175. And uh, you are now among the crumbling remains of Yarmdale. This, the only sound that fills the air is the creak of old wooden houses on the wind and the low murmur of a stream that flanks the ruins from the north. If there is no marker in this space, place one here. So let's place a marker. Mm -hmm. So, again, this means that we can travel through this location on this sheet for free the next time. Uh, and then choose, search the ruins, inspect the stream, or leave. Uh, right. Uh, I think we will search the ruins. I have a feeling that we could uh, find something interesting there. Right. I would start with the stream, I think. Yes, uh, yes. you think? Yeah, I think so, because we're heading to the ruined mansion, it's also by the stream, so I would like to check the stream first, if that's okay. Okay, okay. we will go for it. Okay, so, yeah. uh, inspect this stream, 176. Uh, if N is marked in the story tracker, it isn't. Uh, and then, choose one character with Dwerg or Pathfinding. These are keywords. Keywords were mentioned in the first video. Every character has some that change the way roles or various interactions resolve for your character. Dwerg or Pathfinding. Do we have a character with Dwerg or Pathfinding? Yes, it happens that uh, my Bulgrim have pa have, uh, has path yeah, you're, Pathfinding. Yeah, you're a hunter. Yeah. It makes yeah. sense. Yeah, so you're a Bulgrim hunter with Pathfinding. So we can only choose you. Mm -hmm. And this character rolls for intellect. And, it's it's uh, a good time to yeah, introduce you to the roles. The roles, because most of the actions in the storybook are resolved with uh, roles, the Ernest will, mm -hmm. uh, Ernest will talk about in a moment. Uh, during combat, you also use your um, action and reaction cards, uh, but again, this is a topic for another update, and they also very often contain the roles. The mm -hmm. roles are the basic form of action resolution in a land of Evershade. So how do they work? Yes. So uh, basic rules for roles are very simple. Uh, roles always test one of your attributes. Uh, in this case, we have uh, intellect yep. as uh, so, um, during the roll, we will, uh, the player will roll with uh, the 12 dice and uh, the, in the attribute will... Uh, Determine the number of dice, yeah. Yes, so in this case, uh, my Bulgrim has intellect uh, with, like two, with number 2, so I will use 2 dice to uh, roll. Uh, the roll always uh, states difficulty, so the value you have to roll on the uh, die 
to uh, achieve success. So every uh, role that's equal or higher than the mm -hmm. difficulty counts as one success and many roles scale with the number of successes. Mm -hmm. Yes, number of successes will, ha will be important in some roles uh, and guarantee you better outcomes. Yeah. Uh, in this role, we also have a support keyword, plus one die for a keyword wild. So, uh, essentially, each uh, character with a keyword wild can support this role with one additional dice. And I do have keyword wild. And I also have uh, has, uh, this keyword. Oh, we are a pair of wildlings. Okay, <laughs> so this means that you get one additional die yes. because you match the keyword requirement and I get one die because I match the keyword so requirement. Four, yeah. So it's four dice in total. And the difficulty for this test is nine. And we, if we roll one success, we go to 177. If we fail to roll at least one success, we continue down this uh, story entry. Okay, so f f let's, let's roll. Yep. Okay, <laughs> right. So I have four and you have two, two and twelve. Well, Let's take them, bring them together yeah, here. Okay, of course. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, the uh, uh, roll is passed because you've rolled a uh, critical uh, yes. success. Uh, uh, the... Not only I have reached the difficulty of the test, but uh, 12 value uh, to 12 result on the die is a critical success. In this case, it, uh, in, mo like in most cases, it uh, gives the player two successes instead of one. So we have two successes, that's more than enough. Uh, if we fail the role, we have a ways to mitigate the role. And the basic way of mitigating the roles is with fate tokens. Yes. Uh... Characters gain fake tokens during the adventure. It's, there are some ways uh, we will cover in probably next video. Mm -hmm. uh, for now, uh, we have one fake token. Yeah, I and have one. And with this, too. we could re-roll our dice uh, if we need to. If we need to, yeah, exactly. And uh, an interesting thing is that you mostly earn. Uh, uh, fate tokens for failed rolls. So if you fail a roll and choose to accept the results, you get a fate token back. So as a consolation prize. Uh, but we have no need to do anything of, uh -huh. the, of this right now. We have passed the test. We have two successes. We go to 177. Um, as you walk past a large rock on the edge of the stream, you notice some Dwergen travel runes carved onto its surface. It is a message left for travelers who know these ancient signs. Following the message, you locate a small wooden boat uh, buried under a tarp and some rubble. It's partially rotten, but it should take you at least a part of the way toward Whitewell. That's, that is, if you're not afraid of a rushing current and sharp rocks. Mark N in the story tracker. Of course. So we have found a boat. Uh, and we can either use this boat to go downstream, which takes us to another roll, or leave. Right, now that we've found the boat, we get to choose again. We can use the boat to go downstream, which uh, requires a roll, uh, or we could leave the boat. Uh, I think it was a good decision to explore the stream, because <laughs> yeah. with the boat, uh, we could uh, travel in a more efficient way. Yeah, yeah, it looks like a good a way, yeah, way to travel without spending uh -huh. a full day. So uh, we'll use the boat. Uh, mm -hmm. And um, this takes us to a role, uh, which uh, is a different uh, type of role from the uh, previous one. Uh, this role uh, has three supporting keywords, but what's uh, most important, it requires a player number of successes, mm -hmm. because many roles uh, uh, scale with the number of characters in the game. So for us, we would need two successes. What else? Uh, last time the role uh, specified which character uh, will roll, but generally during the game, uh, 
if there is a role to perform, uh, the party decides which character uh, is the main uh, yeah, one character, performer. Yeah, one character attempts the role and others can support him. Mm -hmm. And here, uh, the main character rolls for agility and the supporting die comes from rural, wild and survival keywords. So, so I think it will be your turn to yeah, roll? Yeah, I'll roll. Uh, I'll uh, uh, roll for agility. I'll take two dice, that's my agility. I mm -hmm. do have one of the support keywords. I have both rural and wild, but still, you can only support with one die, so... Uh, I'm also wild, so I will roll with one die. Yeah, so again, we have four dice, but this time we need two successes on a difficulty of eight. And let's, let's roll. roll. Oh, <laughs> yeah, Ooh. that's a very interesting result. Uh, we have two ones, a 10 and a four. So, as it stands right now, the roll would be failed. We have only one success. But, but it's a good moment to talk about critical failures yes. in the game. Uh, we have critical successes, but also critical fa failures. Uh, each time a player rolls uh, a one on the die, uh, this character gains one fate token. If, uh, if the player if accepts the, player the accepts role, the role yeah. results. So, right now I have a very interesting opportunity. I could reroll all the dice, uh, all the dice game. that were mm -hmm. failed, so four and two ones, uh, which would allow me a bigger chance to pass the roll. But I don't want to reroll this one. Uh, um, or at least I wouldn't want to reroll it because it will give me a fate token. So I can either reroll two dice and have a bigger chance of passing the test, or I can reroll just one die and hope for the best. Mm -hmm. uh, but then I get a fate token. So uh, it's and your choice. You have a fate token. So you can also, but I think I will. Uh, I can spend my fate tokens on my dice I use during the roll. So uh, I think I will stay with uh, yeah, this fate token. Keep keep, keep the one. I'll it keep the one, I'll reroll this one, mm -hmm. and if I fail, you will reroll <laughs> yours. Okay, so I think we can it's, go uh, with this. It's pure greed, it doesn't end well <laughs> usually. Okay, I'll pay one yeah. fate token, I choose only one die to reroll, and I need eight plus. And I get one, which means I... Uh, which means I have nothing. Basically. Okay, so we still need so, one success. Yeah, but, um, yeah, yeah. So I will use my fate token and try to reroll my die. Too many ones. Oh no, we've uh, failed completely. It, it happens. It it's, happens. Uh, but, uh, yeah. To, uh, when we fail a roll, in, it's not always uh, like complete failure. It sometimes is a new. Uh, just like way new... to resolve the action. Yes. Yeah. So yeah, let's go with the failure. At least it's a bittersweet failure because I get two fate tokens. Then three fate tokens because you gain one fate token. Always you fail the yeah. roll. Two fate tokens for these natural ones. One fate token for a failed roll, and uh, that's it. That's it. Yeah. Uh, so, I'm sorry, Ernest, you've spent a fate token and gained nothing. I'm, uh, I have three, but uh, now we have to resolve a failure. Um, go to 187 on failed roll. 187, I have a feeling it will hurt. Rafting down river proves arduous and dangerous. Relentless rapids cause the boat to slowly come apart. Finally, you hit one rock too many and it shatters, leaving you struggling for your life in the middle of the stream. Mm. Eventually, soaked and battered, you make your way to the shore. Each character loses six hit points, reduced by the number of successes. Uh, and uh, yeah, we let's, one success. let's resolve this because it would kill me, I would get an, uh, uh, I mean, it wouldn't kill me outright, I would mm -hmm. get an injury, which happens when you, 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 in the game, when you lose all HP. But we will talk but more on injuries yeah. in the next video. I have video. six HP, so this would bring me to zero, but fortunately we had one success in mm -hmm. the roll. So this means I'm at one HP. I am at three. And you're so at I'm three at HP. A little bit better position. So the greed was uh, deadly for us. Uh, but uh, now we place the model in the ruined mansion space. Mm -hmm. 
and we take an action from sheet three. Yes. And now we will probably we would probably explore the ruined mansion to check if our um, our thoughts were were right. Uh, but uh, yeah, we won't uh, cover this in this video. We do not want to spoil if the location is correct. We do not spoil what happens inside. So that will be everything for this part of the video. So what you've seen so far were several turns of exploration gameplay on sheet three, but you haven't seen many other important parts of the game. You haven't seen the action and reaction cards in play. You haven't seen those beautiful Divinum dice in action, which also take part in many different roles. Uh, and finally, you haven't seen any of the actual combat because those things will be the topic of the next update. But before we say our goodbyes, I just wanted to put everything you have seen into perspective. Uh, we've only journeyed through several spaces of a single sheet, sheet three journey to Whitewell. The first chapter of Into the Whitewell Adventure that contains this sheet also contains several other sheets. So we have multiple sheets in a single chapter of an adventure. The adventure has multiple chapters. Uh, Into the White Well has three chapters. Each of them uh, takes from two to four hours to play through. So the entire adventure takes players usually from six to seven uh, and seven or seven hours up to 12 hours. Yeah, so it will be about six hours for a single player and up to 12 hours for larger groups. Yeah, groups, for example, of five mm -hmm. characters. And uh, uh, there will be multiple adventures uh, in Lands of Evershade. We can't reveal the actual number right now, but rest assured there will be plenty to do in the game. And um, with that said, I don't think there's anything more we could show you today. Uh, yes, we hope you like what you've seen today. Uh, we were waiting for your comments, feedback and all opinions. Yeah, and uh, see you next time in the third and final development, uh, early development video.